Okay, so how did it go with, uh, with assignment 10? Easy? Not easy? So, so give me some feedback. Okay, so I haven't released assignment 11 yet, so I'd, feedback from you now would be good. If you found assignment 10 easy, then I should know that. Yeah. Yeah, and does that mean it's easy or hard? Um, I, the solution was right from the solution that I was able to complete. Yeah. So I was able to change the syntax from my previous assignment and I was able to complete it. That's the bonus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then the hardest part was actually the syntax and understanding what error you're getting because most parts are just like. Okay. Um, anybody else have sim similar issues? And uh, those of you who had those issues have no Java programming experience, I guess. Okay. So this is the sort of annoying part of this: is some people have learned to program in Java in high school, um, and then somehow this was an easy assignment, maybe, or uh, at least for them it's a chance to review the answers to some of the old assignments. Um, and then there's people who have never programmed in Java before, and that means you're going through all the same sorts of things you went through at the beginning of this course, where Python spits out an error and you don't know what it means. Um, well, now it's the Java compiler spitting out such, a, such an error. Um, okay, so that then gives me some information that I need to decide uh, how not say how difficult, but how, uh, how big I want to make the, the final assignment, which I'll be posting later today. Um, maybe my initial plans were a little too, uh, too grandiose. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's probably up there now. So it's really the marking scheme that's going to change more than, than anything else. Um, in particular, the last question is a biggie that maybe we'll, we'll scale back on the marking. Okay, so any other comments about that? So how are you feeling about Java? How are you feeling about Python? Okay, so you now appreciate Python, um, or at least the, the nice aspects of Python. Um, now Java, uh, nevertheless, if you look at uh, if you look at job opportunities uh, for computer programmers, C++ and Java are two of the big, big ones nowadays. Um, so uh, it, it will be good to know, and in particular, many of you, about I think about 40% of you at least, are going to be in the co-op program, which means uh, in about a year and a half from now, you'll be starting your, your first job as a, as a programmer. Um, and so we, we kind of want to get you up to speed on, on languages that people use. Not that people don't use Python, but it's a, it's a smaller market. Yep. Now that we're at this, this crossroads, uh, the difference, uh, I guess the main caveat uh, of Python versus, for instance, Java as a, as a language itself. Do you, do you, do you have a capable of doing a little thing? Well, so. Pretty much all programming languages are capable of doing anything. Um, so the term for that is uh, they're all Turing complete. They can, can, they can compute anything that can be computed. Um, the, the main difference is that, uh, well, as you see, Python is a very loose language. You don't have to specify types of things. You can kind of anything can be whatever it wants to be. Whereas Java is much more strict, you have to specify the type of every single thing. Everything has to belong in some class. Um, and that tends to uh, allow for large scale projects to be a little bit, uh, to be managed a little bit better. So in, in, we're only doing small programming projects here. So you know what the functions that you wrote do and you know what they should be returning and so on. But when you have a code base that uh, 
that has you know, uh, 10 million lines of code in it, and you're trying to navigate this thing, it's really helpful to have things like return types for functions. So you know, if you look at a function, you know exactly what kind of thing it's going to return, rather than having to look, dig through the code and figure out what it's, what it's uh, you know, what, exactly what sort of thing is being returned. Or, um, as well, you, you, know, you know what kinds of arguments it accepts. And so, uh, so it, it really, for, for large code bases, the sort of discipline that Java requires is, uh, is a bit better. Um, so it seems to, to help that and it enforces that. Whereas if you just start doing a big, big project in Python, you can often end up with this big mess of spaghetti code that you know, nobody remembers exactly what this function does or what types of arguments it's supposed to accept. And indeed, it may even accept different kinds of arguments that you weren't initially intending and someone might try and use it that way. Um, and so it's a, it, it opens itself up to, to, getting, uh, to, to making difficult to maintain code. Yeah, so they, they each have their advantages and disadvantages. Python is a great learner language, a great language for small projects. Java is, a, uh, is more of a, a big scale thing. Um, so, uh, and it, it's also a little bit better suited for integrated development environments that uh, because of this strong typing, they know, even the, the editor knows everything about the code in the sense of, you know, Here's this object that you're working with. It knows what kinds of methods this object supports, uh, what kinds of things you can do with this object, and it can even help you do this, uh, you know, help complete the, the code that you're writing for you. So they each have their advantages and disadvantages. But, uh, you know, if you s take a career, an active career as a programmer, um, and you have more than a, one or two jobs, you'll probably find that you learn, uh, you know, half a dozen and then maybe even ten programming languages throughout your life. And the more you learn, the more you realize there's no major differences. They're just, uh, they're all just, you know, slightly syntaxy differences. So, uh, okay, so I, I gave you this, uh, these sort of introductory lessons to Java that covered the main points but uh, looking back at those, I see there's a few sort of things missing. And, uh, and so I think the, the best way to, to, get, um, to get a good overview, again, is just to develop a, a small application. And uh, the application that we'll do is a simple game. In fact, it's going to be a game of tic-tac-toe. So basic console-based tic-tac-toe game. Uh, it's the kind of thing we were doing in about our third class in Python, so this is about our third class in Java, so it's time we should, uh, we should do something like that. Um, before I do that, though, I'll, I'll let you know a uh, roadmap for the next, uh, I guess it's three, this class and the next two. Uh, this will be our last class in which we're really learning something new. Uh, the next two classes will be kind of review, uh, overview, poking at uh, the, the stuff that I think maybe you guys don't know as well as you should, and, uh, and preparing you for the, the final exam. So, uh, so that's the, the way it's going to go. This is the last real new material lecture. The rest is, uh, is basically exam prep and making sure you understand the, the things you're supposed to understand. Okay, so is there anybody here who has never played tic-tac-toe before? So tic-tac-toe, the basic game, and that's all we're going to make, is played on a 3 by 3 grid. Uh, there's two players, player X and player O, and they take turns putting their symbol in one of these grid uh, squares. So for example, player X starts first. And then player O, and then player X, and then player O, and then player X. And the goal is for each player to make a straight line of three of their symbols in this grid. So 
Here, for example, at this point, player X has won the game because they've made uh, this, these three in a row here on the diagonal. Okay? Um, so it's a game you learn as a kid, and you quickly, if you play it for any length of time, you quickly learn that it's a, it's a stale game in the sense that uh, if both players play optimally, the game finishes in a draw. The board fills up and nobody gets three in a, in a row. But, uh, but that's okay. Um, you know, learning that is part of, uh, part of growing up. And so we want to, uh, to implement this thing. Now, uh, we want to do this in Java. Java is an object-oriented language. Everything has to live inside of an object. So what's the, the main object that you can see here that jumps out at you in tic-tac-toe? Grid. So the, the playing field or the, the board seems to be a, a, a something that's fundamental to this thing, right? So we should probably make a, a board. Okay. So internally, <clears throat> um, so we create a class called board. And internally, this class is supposed to remember the state of the board here. So, um, and maybe it can draw itself and, and do a bunch of things, but uh, to represent the state of this board, what, I mean, what kind of object or what kind of thing could we use? Yep. An array of what? Uh, we could use an array of characters. Yep, X's and O's. Um, any special kind of array? Yep. Yeah, so a two-dimensional array would be handy. So one that can take two indices, let's say the, the row index. Um, these are the rows. We could call them 0, 1, and 2. And then these are the columns. Also call them zero, one, and two. So a two-dimensional array would be handy, and um, characters are fine. Um, integers are fine. Basically, we we can use whatever we want as long as it uh, as long as we we understand the the conventions. So let's uh, let's make it an array of integers. So integer. It's a two-dimensional array, and we'll call it board. Okay. And so the values that I'm going to store in this two-dimensional array are, uh, are integers. Let's, uh, let's give some, some meaningful names to these things. So we'll say static integer nothing is zero. So Basically, the values that will be stored in this integer array will be one of three values. Either there's nothing there, uh, the, the spot is empty, nobody has played there yet. Um, could be an X that's there, or it could be an O that's there. Okay, so we'll give these three static integers, meaning that they're, um, they're just part of the class, not part of... of uh, not part of particular objects of that class or particular instances of that class, and they're just, just handling these three values, 0, 1, and 2. 0 means nothing is there, 1 means x is there, and, uh, and 2 means o is there. So we want to create, we need to create a function that initializes this, uh, this class, or instances of this class. And so in Java, the way you do that is you create a function that has no return value. So this is a public function, but notice there's no return value specified. And the name of the function is the same as the, the name of the class. So this is the equivalent of Python's underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore methods. Um, so we want board to be a new integer array, and it should be a 3 by 3 array. 
Okay, so does that initialize the, the board for us? Yeah. Okay, so, um, so you have to set all the positions in the array. Um, so let's do that. So I want to go through for every row. I want to go through for every column. And I want to set board at that row and that column equal to nothing. Okay. Um, for anybody who has Java experience, is this, uh, is this necessary? Yeah. Uh, one question. Why can't you just initialize the, um, the array as right after you declare a new int 33? Why can't you just declare its values in 0, 0, 0 with the current brackets? Yeah, so you could also, uh, you could also write the, the values with curly brackets. That would look... I mean, a different way to do this would be to say board equals uh, 0, 0, 0. Um, uh, no. So another way to do the equivalent thing would be to do something like this. Um, so I'll just comment that out. This creates a, an array, and its elements are arrays of length 3, um, and they, they contain the value of 0, 0, 0. Um, but let's pretend, for instance, that we have big plans for this game, and eventually we're going to make this an n by n game where uh, you have this huge board. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do it this way. Um, but my question was, is this necessary? So one of the things in, uh, about Java is that um, when you allocate arrays, they are by default, they get assigned their default values. So in particular, if you allocate an array of any of the number types, the array gets filled with zeros at the time it's allocated. So in this case, it, this is not strictly necessary, but we could, uh, we can leave it there anyway, it doesn't hurt. And if you're working in a different language, something like C or C++, then this would be absolutely necessary. So in languages like C and C++, when you allocate an array, what's in the array is basically whatever garbage was left there the last time that memory location was used. And so it's, uh, it's not bad practice to, uh, to initialize these things. I mean, it, it's necessary, actually, in C and C++. And maybe this is some function that we would use repeatedly, so we could write a function called public void clear, which does exactly this, just initializes the board. Okay, so... Um, we're writing code now. It's handy to, uh, to have a place to test that code. So we'll write a main function for this class that we'll use as a little testing area for, uh, for the code that we're writing. So pretty much the only thing our board class can do right now is create itself, uh, create an instance of it. So let's just make sure that that all works and compiles. Compile's fine, and it runs without crashing, which hopefully means that it, it works. Okay, um, so what else should boards be able to do? So what else can you do with one of these boards, these 3x3 three three tic-tac-toe boards? So if you want to make this into a game, eventually you'll have to After what? Yep. Eventually, you'll have to print it. So we're not going for anything fancy here. 
Um, but you know, we would like to display this thing. We're going to we're not going to learn about GUIs in this course. Uh, that's for the next course. So we'll we'll stick to text output. But we want to display our uh, our board. So let's write a function called uh, print on, which will print this board onto something called a print stream. Okay, so if you're going to draw me a tic-tac-toe board, how would you do that? So you have a side, you have this 2D array that has, tells you which places on the board have X's and O's, so what would you do? So don't worry about Java in particular, just how would you do it? Okay, so, um, all right, so let's, uh, let's try and draw at least the, uh, you know, the, the shape of the board, and then we'll worry about putting the, the values in. So, let's see. Um, maybe something like this. So, the board has three rows. We'll want to draw all three of those rows. And it has three columns, so every time we draw one of those rows, we want to draw three columns. So Let's do, for example, let's leave some space here. So when I'm drawing, so when I'm drawing, let's say this row. So I'll draw this thing, uh, this thing, this thing, this thing, and this thing. So uh, I'll draw either an empty, a blank space, a vertical bar, an X or an O, a vertical bar, um, and uh, an X or an O in, in this case, an X in this case. So, first thing I want to draw is what? <clears throat> yep. So in this case, I, for this particular board, I want to draw an empty space, but in general, what I want to draw is the value that's stored at position 0, 0, right? So the thing that's in the 0th row and the 0th column. So what I want is a way to take these things, these values, which are 0, 1, or 2, and turn them into uh, spaces or x's or o's. And I'll show you a trick that's actually really common. Um, so you could do that with an if statement, but there's a, a cleaner way to do it. And let's call these things. Um, so we'll make an array that at position 0 has a space, at position 1 it has an x, and at position 2 it has an o. And that way, if we take one of these values, one of these three values, and use it as an index into that array, uh, it'll actually draw the right thing for that index. So let's say, um, what did I call that array? Letters. Letters at board at i.
forgot to say that this was a, an array of strings, not just a single string. And so this print on function that I'm writing takes as an argument a print stream. This is somehow some magic thing that I just pulled out of nowhere. In fact, it's not. Um, we're all, we've already used print streams. And if you did the assignment, uh, you've used them too. Um, System.out is a print stream. Okay. So um, this thing takes an argument that says, where should I print it, or on what should I print it? Uh, think of that thing as being system.out, but maybe in the future we could change that to some other, uh, some other thing um, where it's not not necessarily system dialogue. So now when I run it, uh, I get uh, somehow it runs, and, but there's a bunch of space gets printed out. Okay, so something happened. Uh, something got printed. And what was it that got printed? So the board starts out being blank, and so all that happened is a bunch of blanks got printed out. Um, now, when I'm done, let's say, printing one of these rows, what, uh, what should I do next? Yeah. Should start a new line. So when I'm done printing a row, which is this inner loop, I should print a new line. Okay, so let's, uh, let's give this a whirl. Let's change our board a bit and say, uh, we'll put an x at 0, 0, and we'll put a o at 1, 1, and see if that changes anything. Okay, so now it looks like it's, we're getting something that looks right. Right up in the top left corner, that's position 0, 0. We get this X appearing, and at position 1, 1, which is the middle of the board, we get this O appearing, and it looks like there's a blank row down here, as there, there should be. Um, so now we just want to make our vertical and horizontal bars. So vertical bars, where would I print those? Yep. Um, it's zero point five, uh, and like they each have uh, equal between zero and one and one. Okay. Um, so somehow, if this thing were counting uh, by halves, then we would do it at the the half markers, um, and the half markers are uh, well, not yeah, not. Not really. Uh, so, for example, we wouldn't want to do it at 2.5. Um, but so you hit on something, which is here we're printing three symbols, but we only really want, for example, two vertical, two vertical bars. And when do we want to print those bars? So, do I want to print a bar before I print anything else? No. Do I want to print a bar after I print the first thing? Yeah. So after I print this, I should do a vertical bar. After I print this, I should do a vertical bar, but not after I print this. So actually, I should do this whenever uh, j is not equal to 2. So right after j equals, when j equals 0, that means I've just printed the first thing. When j equals 1, I've just printed the second thing. But when j equals 2, I've just printed the third thing, and I don't want to print one of these vertical bars. So there we put our vertical bar. And we then use the same logic um, for the horizontal bars. After we print the first column, we want to draw a horizontal bar. After we print the second column, we want to draw a horizontal bar, but not after the third column. 
And let's see. I think that should be the right number of those, those things. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, so there we go. We have our, uh, our very cheap uh, uh, version of our tic-tac-toe board. Okay, and let's maybe, well, we can come back and, uh, and fix that, add stuff to that later if we want. Let's leave it as, uh, as is for now. So now this thing can draw itself. That's, uh, that's handy. Um, what else do we do with boards? What's that? We play on it. So that means we make moves. So let's say let's write a function for making a move. So this is where, you know, a move is either x draws an x in one of the squares or o draws an o in one of the squares and it'll be the square at this row, at this column, and this integer here will represent the player, either x or, uh, or o. Now what we'd like to do is make sure, um, so this is the board, and it knows the rules of tic-tac-toe, and it should really make sure that this move is, uh, is valid, and that's why we'll have this thing, let's say, return a Boolean value, which tells us uh, whether or not the move is valid or not, and if it's invalid, it'll return false, and if it's valid, it'll do the move and, uh, and return true. So, when is a move invalid in tic-tac-toe? Yep. Okay, so when it's on top of an existing piece. So that means that the, uh, the move can only be valid if, uh, if the position that I'm trying to play on is empty. So we'll say if the board at row, at column, that's the position I'm trying to play on, is not equal to nothing, meaning that it's empty, then we'll return uh, false. So we don't do it. We can't play the move because it's an invalid move. Um, when else is it invalid? Yeah. If it's not on the board. So, for example, if row is less than zero, if you try and play at a negative row, that's off the board. That would be off to the left there. Uh, or rather, that would be up to the, the top. Um, or if row is bigger than 2, or if the column is less than 0, or if the column is bigger than 2. So this is one of the things I forgot to tell you about Java. Um, in Python, when we want to say, we want a condition and we say A or B, we use the word OR. In Java, you use two vertical bars. Um, so. Uh, that's the, the OR operator in Java, uh, the logical uh, OR thing. So in that case, if you give me an invalid row or an invalid column, then I'll, uh, I'll return false. Um, if you give me a position in which there's already something there, I'll return false. Otherwise, I think it's now safe to, uh, to do this. we'll put the, the player's marker on that location. And if we want to be really careful, we could say, for example, um, if the player is not equal to x, and the player is not equal to o, so that would be an invalid player, then we could also return false. So this is a fairly common sort of thing in uh, basically all many styles of programming that functions um, pretty much the only reason that they're there is to do a lot of this kind of checking before doing something trivial. Um, 
So in this case, we have to check it's a valid row, valid column, that there's nothing already there, that the input, the player's name is either X or O and not some other integer. And then finally, we, we just do the obvious thing, which is to, to set the value. OK. Um, so then this thing here, instead of saying bd.board at 0, 0 equals x, we would say bd.makeMove 0, 0, x. And bd.makeMove 1, 1. So it says there's a missing return statement, and why is that? Where is that return statement supposed to go? Yeah, so here I have to return something. So Java doesn't just let you not return something. If you declare a function as returning a value, you have to return it. And um, in this case, the move was successful, so I'll return true. Okay, so that seems to work now too. So now we have to get to the, basically the hardest part of the board uh, class. Um, so the board can print itself, it can make moves. What else maybe should it be able to do? Something that's a little bit more sophisticated, yeah. Yeah, so it should check if the game is over. If, the, if somebody has won the game. So um, let's write a function called winner that will return uh, either x, o, or none. Uh, x if x is the winner, o if o is the winner, and none if, uh, or no nothing if, uh, if there's no winner yet. Okay, um, so how, how do you win a tic-tac-toe? What are the things we need to check? So how many different ways are there to win? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... It seems that you can win, uh, you know, by getting three in a row here, three in a row here, or three in a row here. So if you fix i, the row, and then look at the three values of j, if they're all the same, then, uh, then that's a winner. Okay, so three x's here, or three o's here. So let's, uh, let's do that. And then we need to do that for all three values of i. So that's something like, for all the three values of i, we will check, um, let's say, if the board at i at 0 equals the board at i at 1, and the board at i at 1 equals the board at i at 2, then what? So that says, for example, if i is 0, that would say this value equals this value, and this value equals this value. So all three of them are the same. Is that a winner? And three x's there would be winners. Three o's there would be winners. Yep. Yeah, so we don't, we don't want that to be considered a winner. We don't want three empties. So we'll say if the board at i at 0 is not equal to empty or nothing, then, and the other two conditions are met, then we have a winner. Okay. So if, uh, if the first thing is not empty, and all three are equal, then we have a winner, because that means they're all either x or they're all either o. Um, 
Who's the winner? At any of those positions, right? They're all the same values at those three positions. So we can use uh, board at i at 0. That'll tell us um, whichever value is, is, is in there. And we know that it's not nothing because we, are, we checked that that was not the, the case. OK. Um, and so that will give us any of the winners that are three in a row along a, a line like this. Now, there's the other kind of winners, which are along a column. So let's check those two. So if you're at column J, for example, J equals 2 here, you'd need to check if those you know, three things are the same. So those would be board at 0J. Zero J, one J, and two J. Okay, so that'll find us a winner along any uh, any column. So any vertical uh, line that's, that's the same. Uh, what are the other ways to win? Yep. Across the diagonals. So we could code those with a for loop, but uh, it's maybe just as easy to, to do them by hand. Um, so for example, this diagonal here, uh, here, here, here. What are the values there that we need to check? Zero, zero, one, one, and of course we always need to check that they're not equal to nothing. So if board at 0, 0 equals board at 1, 1, and board at 1, 1 equals board at 2, 2, that represents a winner along the, the diagonal. And how about the other diagonal? What are the coordinates for that? 0, 2, 1, 1. Two zero. Okay. And in that case, the winner is the whoever has their marker at zero two. Okay. Um, any other ways to win tic tac toe? I don't think so. Uh, so I think there's only eight ways. Three rows, three columns, or the two diagonals are the options. So once none of those things have happened, we return nothing. There is no winner. Yep. Isn't it redundant to check what? Uh, Yes. Well, you mean, so what are the two test cases that do that? Well, so when it's checking a row, though, for the first row, it's checking if 0, 0 is not equal to uh, nothing. But the next time, it's checking if it's, uh, if it's 1, 0, it's not equal to, to nothing. Right. So, um, so there's different tests. It is true that this one gets checked several times if it's not equal to nothing. If you really cared about the efficiency of this, you could 
refactor this, uh, this code to, to check that early on and, and branch there, but um, I think it's easier to make code that uh, it's easier to see what it's checking rather than to make it as efficient as, as possible. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll get to that later. So here we get a whole bunch of errors. When this happens to you, um, go back and uh, go back up to the top of these errors. Typically it's the first one that's the issue. Uh, and so here it's unhappy with us probably because we didn't close these things. And okay, so did anybody see the error here? It says bad operands for binary operator and end, and it points out this line of code here, which is on line 62. Yeah. Yeah. So we we use the assignment operator rather than the equality testing operator, um, and that's line 62. That's right there. Okay, so now we don't have any errors, and let's, uh, let's test this thing. So let's say, Let's do a few boards and see if it correctly computes the, the winner. Um, so at this point, there should be no winner if, uh, if there's only one X and one O. So now let's set up a case where there is a winner. make two moves in a row. Not really the way the game is played, but it allows us to do some testing. So, uh, so here, at this point, we ask for the winner. It says the winner is nothing. And at this point, we ask for the winner. It says the winner is X. So that seems to work. Uh, hopefully, we got all of our indices right. We'll, uh, we'll hope that that's the case for now, just so we can get, uh, get this finished in class today. Um, all right, so we have a, a fairly decent board class that uh, allows us to make moves. It can tell if somebody's won the game or not. Um, maybe it's time to move on to another, another aspect of the game. So what other objects sort of jump out at you in, uh, in tic-tac-toe? If you describe the game, what nouns do you use? So you use, usually say it's played on a grid. Well, a grid is this board that we've just made. Uh, the players take turn putting X's and O's. Um, and then the winner is someone wins when this happens. So what are the nouns that I just used there? Yep. Players. So I use board. We got that one. And then the next thing you say is you start talking about players. So maybe we should have a tic-tac-toe player. So we'll create a class called player. Um, now a player will have a, uh, we'll call it his ID. Um, but really all it is, is it's either going to be X or O. We have player X and player O, so we'll call this his ID. And when we create a new player, we specify the player's ID. Uh, 
So here's another thing that I didn't explain about Java as objects, but that was okay for the last assignment and won't be okay for the next one. Um, so in Python, we always had this argument called self that we use to refer to the parts of an object. In Java, uh, that thing is called this, and you don't need to specify it uh, explicitly, you, or you don't need to, uh, to pass it as an argument explicitly. It's done implicitly. And so in this case, I want to save the argument that was given to me called ID. I want to save it into my, uh, my field called ID. Okay. And this is December 2nd. Okay. So what's the main thing that players do? Yeah, so the players play the game, and so they, they make moves. So that's the main thing that they need to do. Um, so let's write a, a make move method for players. And in order to make a move, what does the player need? What information would be helpful for them? What's that? Well, that's... that. That's what they will do. They'll choose the place they want to make their move. But in order to make that choice, what should they have access to? Yeah? They should be able to see the board. So they should, uh, they should take the, the board as an argument um, and, uh, and be able to, to do something with that. And in our version of the game, we're going to only have human players. And so making a move really is going to be uh, basically asking the human to tell you what, what move they, they want to make. Okay. Um, so I want to say something like, player And I'd like to say which player I'm addressing. So I get that from the ID. And if I take board.letters at ID, that will give me either an X or an O. Okay. Um, all right. So we address the player and we say make your move. So how should the player input their move in this text game? text inputs. So maybe they could specify the row and the column. Sounds reasonable. So let's say, um, so when we want to read from the keyboard, what do we have to do in Java? Anybody remember that from our first Java lecture? Yeah, we have to create a scanner. system.in um, and now these scanners can uh, parse things so they can read we can ask them for integers in particular so so we'll ask the scanner for uh, To read two integers, maybe we'll specify what format we want the the player to input their move, row and column. Uh, scanner reads these two things, and now we want to say board make this move on that row, that column, and I'm player either X or O. So 
let's test this. So let's create a player X. Let's ask the player to make a move, and then let's print the board. Try that. So here I tried to write a Java function without specifying a return type. There's only one time that that's allowed. That's when you're creating this initializer function uh, called a constructor in Java. Um, every other function has to have a return type. Now, in this case, I'm not actually interested in returning a value. And so, in Java, what do you use as the return type then? Void. So, you have to have a return type, but if you're not interested in returning a value, then your return type is void. import okay player X choose your move let's try 1-1 one, one. good so he played at position 1-1 one, one. let's try 0-2 played at position 0-2 let's try to zero. So it seems to, uh, seems to be working. Um, any potential issues? Yeah. Okay, so the player may not know that uh, zero, so there's a user interface issue that the player may not know that it's uh, zero-based indexing. Um, so we could clean up the... So we could you know, specify that in the prompt maybe. Might be helpful. Um, but what's a bigger issue? Yeah. Uh, no, it's not doing that. It's just that we only made, we only set up this main function to do one move. Um, so it's not redrawing it with all zeros. If we, if we made some more moves, it would, uh, you know, it would do it repeatedly. So for instance, So I could make a move at 0, 0, I could make a move at 0, 2, uh, 1, 1. So it, it's keeping track of all the, the moves. Um, but bigger problem is it'll let me make, it'll happily just keep going if I try and make invalid moves. Um, it just kind of ignores them, which I would maybe not want it to do. I'd rather have it ask me again. And then a bigger problem is if I try to make a move like AB, um, I'll crash this thing. So first thing I want is to make sure that I actually only make valid moves. Uh, or that at least when I ask the player to make a move, they make some bad inputs or whatever, but this thing doesn't return until they've made a move. So there's no option in tic-tac-toe to pass um, you know, and, and not take your turn. So I want to avoid that. So this whole thing here should go inside a loop. And probably the easiest way to do that is to introduce a variable that tells us if we're done. And as long as we're not done, we repeatedly ask the player to make a move. 
And that's successful if you remember this board make move function return true or false. It returns uh, false if we never actually did make the move, and it returns true if we did. So we are done once this thing returns true. So that handles these kinds of problems. Um, if I put in invalid indices, it just asks me again to, uh, to do it. Um, but it doesn't handle this kind of problem where I put in something that's not an integer. Now, to handle that, you do pretty much the same thing you do in Python. It's just that the syntax is different. So how did we handle somehow invalid inputs in Python? Uh, no, when we, when we did something like, when you try and convert some string to an int, something bad can happen and we handle it a certain way, yeah? So we did try and, uh, and accept, and Java has the same mechanism. Um, it's actually try, so you create a try block around the code that you're worried about. And you write a, uh, a catch afterwards to catch the exception. So the syntax looks like this. Um, if this code fails for whatever reason, this variable e will be set to an exception object that explains what the failure was. Um, we'll just write a, an error message. And try again. So there. That just tells me that I gave it invalid input until I uh, uh, zero two until I finally choose something that's valid. Okay. So now we have a robust uh, mechanism for the player to uh, to do their inputs. Um, and that's pretty much all these kinds of players do. If we were going to extend this thing later, we maybe would like to have uh, different kinds of players. So they might become subclasses of player that implement make move in different ways. So for example, you could have uh, a computer player who actually just chooses the move themselves. They analyze the board and decide where to move. You could have a remote player somehow that makes moves in some different way over a, a network connection or something if you're trying to make this uh, uh, an online game. Lots of, uh, lots of different options there. So now I think we've got everything we need. All we have to do is pull it all together. And typical thing to do uh, then is to just create a new class um, whose name is the the name of the application that you're building and that has a main function in it that's the main function that's typically run. So we'll create a class called tic-tac-toe. The purpose of this class is just to hold a main function that plays a game of tic-tac-toe. Okay, so to play a game of tic-tac-toe, what should I do? First thing. What's that? So we want a board. Okay, what else do we need? Yeah. So we need two players. So let's make an array of two players. Uh, first player will be x, second player will be o. So now we have a game and we have two players, we have a board and we have two players. What happens next?
okay? So we want a loop. So we're going to loop because we're going to start playing now, right? So the number of times that play goes on for is, uh, is variable. Um, so let's, uh, let's figure that out. So let's, maybe we'll use a while loop. <clears throat> so when should we stop playing? Yep. Okay, so when someone wins or when the board is full. So while, so we'd like to continue as long as the winner is equal to nothing. So that means there is no winner. Um, so that's the, the board's winner. Or when the board is full. So when the board is full, it would require us to go through looking at the whole board. Um, so we could write a, a method in the board class to check that. Um, but then I started to do that last class, and someone pointed out that there's a much easier way to do it. Yeah. There's only nine turns in tic-tac-toe, then the board is full. There's only nine spots. During every turn, somebody uses up one of those spots. So it's over when, uh, after nine turns. So we start with a counter, and we'll say, um, well, i is less than nine, and there's no winner. We'll take a turn, and then we'll increase the value of i. Okay. So during the ith round, who should be who should be playing? So during the zeroth round, which is the first one, who should be playing? X. X. What about during the oneth round? O. o. What about the tooth round? X. And what about the threeth round? O. o. Okay. So is there a nice way to to write then the player who should be playing as a function of i? Okay, so if it's even, then it's player X, and if it's odd, it's player O. Is there a way of writing that? Not divide by two. So the, the remainder after dividing by two, right? So we can just say players at I mod two that's the player who should be making his move at this point, and he needs the board to do that. Okay. Now, eventually this loop finishes, and it's either because there was a winner or there wasn't. And so we can say, if the winner is equal to four dot nothing, and otherwise we can announce the winner. test this thing. What's that? Ah, good point. Well, let's, let's test it and see. Um, so lots of errors always go up to the top. Uh, public tic-tac-toe. There's a keyword missing there. It's a 
class. So that compiles. And indeed, so now it says player X make your move. Zero, zero, okay, player O make your move. But we're not showing them the board, so it's kind of a blind uh, version of it. Um, okay. So we better show the board, and we would like to show the board at the beginning and after every move. So that would be something like uh, board.println system.out and then after every move as well. Okay, so now we're, we're set. Who wants to be player X? You had your hand up. You get to be player X. Make your move. 1-1. One, one. Who wants to be player O? Okay. 0-0. Zero, zero. Player X? 1-0. Player O? 2-1. Two, one. Two, one. <laughs> Player X, 2-2, two, two. Uh. One, two. Yes. okay, 2-0, two, zero. player O, 0-2, Player X, zero, three. So they won't let you do that. Zero, one. Game ends in a draw. Okay. So one more round so we can see a win. Uh, who wants to be player X this time? Okay. Zero, zero. Player O, yep. 1-1. One, one. Player X, 0-1. Zero, one. Zero, one. Player O, 0-2. Player X, you have to tell me what that is. Are you sure that's what you want? <laughs> Two zero. Two one. Player X. One zero. Indeed, player X wins. Good. Um, so there we have a working version of tic-tac-toe. Uh, you notice that the interface is maybe not perfect, uh, more because players have more difficulty actually specifying their move than they do knowing what the, the best move is. So the interface could be improved a bit. Um, Probably if I was stuck with this text interface, I might use A, B, and C for the rows and 1, 2, 3 for the columns to help avoid mixing those, those things up. But that would be uh, an easy enough change to, uh, to make. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll leave it at there for today.